Welcome to the Majesty Now Show with Jay Carroll. I'm Prophetess Deanna Dixon, your host for today. And isn't it just great to be in the land of living? Oh, come on, somebody give him praise and give him glory. Because I don't know your story, but we all got a story. So I just want to encourage you and, and, and just allow the Spirit of God to touch you, to heal you where you've been broken, where you've been worn, where you've been torn, where you have just been in the name of Jesus. So sit back and receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Praise God, praise God. Well, I'm going to start with the book of Joshua because we are the Joshua generation and you know who Joshua was. And if you don't know, I'm, up, I'm going to tell you in a second. So I'm going to start with the first verse of the book of Joshua. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke into Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses minister saying, verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Oh, Lord, there's been so much death. Oh, but hold on. I see life. I see life. He say, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. You are the children of Israel, and it is time to rise like never before, said the Lord. Oh, let me read on. Oh, come on. All right, verse 3 says, every place that the sole of your foot should tread upon, that I have given you, as I've said unto Moses. Now we're going to go ahead and skip over to verse 6. It says, be strong and of good courage. Do I have anyone being not strong? Oh, I know you've been warned. I know it's been something since 2021. Pandemic, everything, life. But let me read this to encourage you. Verse 6 says, be strong and of good courage. For these people, thou should divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto the fathers that give them. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Every time you see God repeat himself, that is very important to put in your spirit. Let me continue. He said, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant. I, I like the, the word servant, not star, not celebrity, not wannabe, but servant. Okay, here, and come on back. So, commanded thee, turn not right hand or to the left that thou may prosper whithersoever thou goest. Let me break this down. Some of you are trying to do your own thing and God told you to go right here, not to the left, not to the right but you're trying to do your own thing because when we are in a situation, when we feel broken, we start to wonder oh, oh, I'm not ready for that and neither are you. Just one moment. And it says then you may prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now, this is my favorite scripture of the whole Bible in case you wanted to know because it tells everything. Verse 8 says, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. The enemy is trying to make you forget God through the word of God. But thou should meditate therein day and night. Have you truly been meditating? You going through something? Have you been meditating day and night? Oh, let me continue. Let me continue. It says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Some of you trying to figure out why you can't do it in God because you're not doing it for God. You have to be intentional when he says day and night. That means I get up in the morning. God, thank you for waking me up. God, keep me. God, lead me. God, protect me. God, heal me because I've been broken. Let me continue. It says. Wherein then you should make your way prosper. Uh oh, make. That means there's going to be opposition. In opposition, you're supposed to stand in position. Oh, I know there's going to be transition, but you stand in position because you want God, hallelujah, to move like never before. Oh, good enemy is going to try to move you out of position through tests, through trials, through situations. Oh, I'm going to cut you today. It might be family. It might be friends. It might be a husband. It might be a wife. It might be a child. You better learn to get on your face. Let me continue. It says, and then thou should have good success. You want to be successful? Do you have to do it God's way? All this ifing and 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 doing what you want to do, you can't do it that way, says God. Oh, let me continue. Verse 9 says, have not I commanded thee? Do you understand this is a commandment? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thy dismayed. For the Lord your God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I am a living witness and a living testimony. I've been here. I've been there. I've been everywhere. And I can tell you, I don't care what I've been through or who. Oh, come on. Let me tell you what's happening. God is with me. Why? Because I get up in the morning. I, I do what I've just read. I meditate day and night. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you the title. The title of my message is 
nor more broken pieces. Oh, I know you've been broken through this, through that, through tests and trials. And I asked God, I said, God, what's going on in this hour? He said, I'm allowing the enemy to push you into your destiny. You see, your pain will develop your purpose like never before. I know all too well about that. And, and sometimes you look around and you don't have anyone but you and God. Because he's trying to bring you back to that relationship. You see, we've been broken. <laughs> Oh, we've been broken. Oh, ladies and husbands, you know about this too, truth be told. This is pressed powder. And if you're married or even single, have a girlfriend, you've always, you've all saw this, to where it starts like this. And this is pressed powder again, where it's whole, where it's really whole. You see, it's whole. But I don't know why we as women, girls, We'll allow it to be broken in so many pieces, and we're trying to pat it. We're trying to pat it. I said we're trying to pat it, but the thing is, someone's going to fall on the floor. And, and to be honest with you, there's no evenness. There's no wholeness. So you're going to have to be careful with the way you handle it. Because if I handle it too rough, it's going to fall. Oh, some of you are falling. But, 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 but if, if I'm whole, if I'm whole, I could do this, I could do that. And, and, and what you got, devil? What you got, devil? Because guess what? God is with me. I'm whole. What am I saying? Too many broken people, said the Lord. Because we're not being intentional about our praise and our worship. There it is. You see, your worship is your worship. Oh, break it down, prophetess. I sure will. When I go into worship, that's when I get in a posture of worship. Now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to be whole and, and, and no longer broken. Because the broken pieces, first of all, they look crazy. Second of all, they, they're all different pieces. And, and I can't work with that. God cannot work with broken pieces. He, he said, but I, I, I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Oh, let me tell you about this word brokenness. It says, brokenness is a state of strong emotional pain. That's what you've been hit with. Everybody, truth be told, your story is not my story, but it's definitely a story. You've been broken, you've been worn, you've been torn, but God sent me here to tell you that's not in. Your story is just beginning because as you get broken, what God is doing is he taking some things out and he putting some things in. He's realigning your life to match who he has called you to be and who he has ordained you to be, sustained you to be. But we keep trying to do our own thing. What is our own thing? Whatever this one comes with or that one. You see, I, 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 I preached something about 20 years ago where good people Mix it too. What do you mean by that? I'm a good person, so I do this and I do that. Oh, that's good. That's good. But have you done what the Lord have asked you to do? You see, when you find yourself in a situation, you need to go back. T.D. Jakes taught me that. Years ago when I was in California, nothing just happens. Let me break that down. Whenever I find myself in a situation, sometimes we, we don't know what to do. So you might get alcohol, drugs, man, woman, y'all know. But, but he said, go back to the beginning. What is the beginning of that thing, of that situation? Who started it? Who started it? If you started, you see flesh, you're going to have to maintain it yourself. But if God started, he is obligated to see that thing through, through the end, said God. So what am I saying? You don't go to God anymore, Samson. Oh, <laughs> Samson was a Nazarene. <laughs> and Samson was ordained and anointed of God. Now, let me tell you the difference between this. He started messing with Delilah. Oh, everything is in a name. Delilah. What is your Delilah in your life? Because if you are not where God wants you to be, there's a Delilah in your life. And God doesn't want you broken. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> and not necessarily in that order, said God. So let's go back to Samson. Samson kept messing with Delilah. And I read that because that was my first sermon. And I could not understand. I searched and I searched and I searched. He said he loved her, but she never said she loved him back. It was a plot. It was a plan. Samson was a great man. I mean, he had so many battles. He killed so many men with a jaw bone. You know, there's another word, but I, don't, I prefer not to use it, but you get the drift. He was so anointed by God. I'm going to help you out. Some of you are wondering, why am I going through? What's going on? Why are friends leaving? Why are family acting crazy? Because you are anointed. 
<laughs> and when you are anointed, there's an appointment against you. There's an enemy that will rise up because he knows that if you truly pull out what God is trying to place in you, Oh, it's going to be some trouble. You see, I'm reminded of 12 disciples that turned the world upside down because they knew Jesus. But 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 they were filled. Oh, let, let's go back to Samson. So Samson kept messing with Delilah. And I could never understand, how is it that this woman bound you up the first time, asked you questions that she shouldn't have, and you went back to her? It is called a reprobate mind. When you are not in tune with Jesus, you are in tune with another spirit. And there it is. You will get broken. Because the enemy knows that if you are whole, oh, you are a whole person to get. I'm talking about you will change lives, countries, states, your family. It is time to break generational curses. That's why people are broken. But God sent me here to tell you, you will no longer be broken but blessed. If you do what he's called you to do, Samson, you can't touch the unclean things, Samson, because they're out to get you. And I'm going to go to the end of the story. And it touched my heart. It really touched my heart because I said, God, why did Samson ask to die? Samson was in shame and embarrassed like some of us when we mess up. But, but he said, if I could just kill more than I ever did in my death. But I'm asking you, before you say that, why didn't he say, God, just restore me? I'm going to tell you, he lost the most important thing that God had gave him. One of the most important things. Let me clarify that. His vision. Oh, I'm going here. Let me tell you something. When you are broken, you can't see. You got tears in your eyes. You got fear. You got pain. You got emotion. Oh, let me continue. God says, I'm going to heal you from the inside out. Oh, oh, that's good right there. Because so many people need a touch from God. But let me continue with this definition. I, I need you to really get the meaning of brokenness. It says, a state of strong emotional pain that stops someone from living a normal or healthy life. I am not against life coaches. I am not against therapists. I am not against... But when I go back and I read this Bible, it says that everything that you are dealing with is in this Bible. Everything that you need is inside of you, God says. He says, but you haven't tapped into it because you're broken. You see, when you're broken, you're all over the place. You're here, there. They call it the jack of all trades and master of none. Oh, we're talking about relationship, not just relations. But I want to continue with this brokenness. I have to continue. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those that are crushed in spirit. I came to speak to your spirit today. God says he's going to encourage you. He's going to provoke you to be who we have called you to be. And yes, in this hour, I decree and declare it. And yes, in this lifetime, but there has to be a change, God says. We have to change the whole body of Christ. Yeah, that's right. Me too. We have to repent, revise, renew, and refresh. We have to come back to God on a level that we have never known him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let me continue. I want to go back to Joshua. It says, verse 10. This is chapter 1, Joshua, verse 10 says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, 11, pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare ye victuals, for within three days you should pass over this jar to go and possess the land which the Lord your God have given you. Don't you understand that we are the most in the most crucial crucial season in this hour? There is a transfer of the wealth. But if you are broken, you can't hear God. If you are broken, you don't have a million dollars. If you are broken, you don't even know your assignment. If you are broken, hallelujah. So God is trying to get us into a state of wholeness. Let me continue. He says, verse 12, And the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half of the tribe of Manasseh spake, Joshua saying, verse 13, Remember the word, uh oh, remember. Oh, you remember. What Moses, my servant of the Lord, commanded, saying, The Lord God had given you rest and had given you the land. 
Don't you understand that this is our time? This is our hour, especially the remnant of God. God is getting ready. That's why it's been a turmoil. That's why it's been this and that's why it's been that. God is literally turning you around, about to place your feet on solid ground. That's why you've been going through tests and trials. And that's why you feel like you're about to break. But God said, no, don't break because your breakthrough is coming. Oh, but you got to be prepared, God says. How do I prepare myself? Fasting, praying, getting on your face before God, having a real relationship with God because some of you, you, you know, I'm going to be good today, but you know, you know, you'll say hallelujah, but you know you living like hell. I, but praise God, we, we moving through to get to heaven. We're all growing. We're all processing because we have to get where God have called us to be. And, and we have to love each other. Oh, saints, 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 some of you being mean to each other. That's not of God. God is love. So, so when I see you anointed and appointed with your nice self and, and yet you're mistreating someone, then I have to understand what is your foundation. Because the foundation of God is love. I'm supposed to prepare your spirit to receive, revive, and thrive. Stop breaking each other's spirit. Oh, it goes back to that brokenness state. Why would I break my brother and sister when God wants them whole? Oh, in this last hour, ask the Lord to be your savior. Right where you're at, I don't care what you're going through. And I have been there. If I may be very transparent, I have been through everything. I've been through this and I've been through that, but I've seen God change me. And if he can change me, he can change you. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say. I don't care who left you. I don't care who stayed. I don't care if you have money or if you don't. This is a relationship and God wants to restore you like never before. He'll touch you. He'll touch you. He'll touch you. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. That's what you need because you cannot do anything. How many times have you been successful with money? And yet never reach the goals that God have called you. That's because you didn't have this. You have to have the wisdom of God, the discernment of God, the knowledge of God, and definitely the anointing of God. What is this all about? What are we doing this? I'm praying that we're not celebrities and stars and not servants. Because as I read this text, he said, a servant of God. That means I want to hear from God. I, 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 I got to have God. Above fame, riches, relationship, whatever it takes, I have to get to God. Because I don't want to stay in this brokenness state. Because I, I'm going to lose something. I've lost something. As a matter of fact, you have. When you're in a broken state, sometimes you lose you. You don't know what to do. But God, I'm going to say it again. But God, he called me and he told me, he said, I want you, and not, not on the phone, okay? He, he actually did that through the spirit just, just for some of you that, oh, she, she said he called her. He'll touch you through the spirit. He'll wake you up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and say, I love you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to take care of that. 